Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. It's Scott and across from me is Callum. Hello. How we doing, mate? Oh, right? Very well, yeah. You good? Very well. Yeah, very good. You all right? Yeah, mate. Yeah. A bit, bit, bit of a roller coaster a couple <laughs> yeah. of weeks for me. Hasn't it just? Yeah. yeah but uh, otherwise, um, yeah, back into it, getting ready for it. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, pretty much had, you know, not quite the same roller coaster, but uh, yeah, had quite the, uh, yeah, had quite the week. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, been. Yeah, been happy to have this as a bit of a distraction. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you've had it as a distraction. I haven't even been able to really. You haven't get even. Into it. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind yeah. of. I'm on the fly here today, guys, because <laughs> I've made no notes at all. Um, I won't go into it. Adlib. Yeah. yeah, I won't go into it. But it's no. just I had some circumstances come up, and I just yeah. have not been able to really get those. into this one. So, yeah. Callum will be... It's all on me, I'm afraid. Callum so. will be coming with the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your ass to school, son. <laughs> you, you, you're kicking ass and chewing bubble gum, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're all, all out, out of gum. Of gum. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there behind you, isn't it? It is. It is. There's a, the, the, the Hellfire Creative guys uh, in the studio have got all these posters up for their favourite films and they live. He's right behind, right behind me. Him, so. <laughs> Seemed apt. <laughs> in, indeed. So before we do get into uh, today's episode, I've got a big shout out to our Patreons. So we've got James, Justin, and we've got our third Patreon, Manika. So, and I hope, I'm, pronounced, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Manika. Or, yeah, so I, that's how I would say it, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. we've got it right. <laughs> Please correct us otherwise. Yes. Um, so thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And supporting yeah. your favourite podcast, guys. It's Thank very, you. very much appreciated. Very much. Um, it yeah. gives us a reason to get out of bed. That, that it so, does. <laughs> on a Sunday morning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why else would we do it? <laughs> Every two weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also, we've got, um, uh, not an announcement, but uh, a shout out to our merch store. Um, our merch store, Callum, is yes. currently modelling the new merch. I am. He is wearing the shaved monkey t shirt. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so a long Personal time favourite. <laughs> a long time listeners will know exactly what we're talking about there. Yes. Hopefully well, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. So some might say it's a, a Freudian slip up by myself. <laughs> some would say. <laughs> <laughs> and it's led to merch. Yeah, so it has uh, indeed. long mate continue. <laughs> and I'm using uh I'm using, I'm wearing, should I say <laughs> <laughs> our original merch with our logo. You are well. indeed. Um, yeah. but I'm looking to get the uh the Raging Gorgon range. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to go down the gym with that one. Yeah, no, Ho- hopefully turn some heads with that. Yeah, yeah hopefully <laughs> ask some questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, you can go to the um, the merch store, and that's uh, buythatmerch.co.uk forward slash cryptid ramblers. Indeed it is. Go and check it out, guys. Yeah. They've got some great stuff on there. The quality is brilliant. Um, it is, I can vouch for it. I've, yeah. got, I've got two stuff from them now, including our own. So Yeah, that's right. You've got the yeah. NAC merch, well, have. didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Kentucky yeah. Goblins. Yeah. Um, and speaking of NAC and the home of the Cryptid Ramblers as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, it's Hellfire Creative. We're here. We are indeed. It our is, new home. It is indeed. Well, it was quite a while ago, so <laughs> it's, it's just home now. It's just home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Hellfire uh, Creative is... Uh, is uh, is the ones that sponsored us, and they they keep us keep the lights on for us. So they are Essex's first podcast, film, and photography studio, situated just forty five minutes from London. Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. Visit hellfirecreative dot com for more information on that. Um, but as a listener of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast, you can also take full advantage of a twenty percent off discount code. Now. You can get a discount code off of podcast, video, and photography services. All you need to do is go to hellfirestudio.uk and use Cryptid at the checkout. That you do, yeah. And that's all that they need to do. That is it. That's simple. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so, you will all re- already know, uh, per, as per the title of this episode, Absolutely. and the thumbnail that we've posted. And that. <laughs> <laughs> that we're going to be looking, well, we have looked into the... Uh, Beast of Brer Road or the Brer Road Beast. That we have. All the way out in Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Mm. And it's um it's it's been a, a fun one. Yeah. You know, that's for sure. It's it's um, you know, after the first two, which were quite, you know, heavy going, but you know, really, really excellent, you know, to do. Um yeah, it's it's been nice to uh yeah, to to jump back into one that's um yeah, a little bit you know, a little bit fun. Mm. Um certainly got some <laughs> interesting content. It does, doesn't this it? This one. Well, the thing is, I've I've known about the Beast of Brer Road for a number of years. 
um, and uh, and and the author of the book, Linda Godfrey. She's she's a big big player in, yeah. in the cryptid world. You know, she's yeah. really she's. I think she's done something like fifteen or sixteen, or maybe maybe even more mm. books. Yeah, on various different cryptids all across North America in particular, yeah. but around the world. Well, this was kind of the OG, you know, wasn't it for her? I think oh, the, yeah, she this. she kind of relaunched this and put it back into you know sort of pop culture, but it also I think kind of helped to launch her as mm. a as an author because I think before that she was just a kind of relatively low key author for a local sort of newspaper wasn't well, she, it so, yeah she was a small town reporter yeah um lo- lo- local newspaper sort of stuff even an echo sort of stuff but yeah that's it yeah. i believe she got her spelling correctly so yeah, <laughs> yeah which does help <laughs> it does help yeah. when you're when you're in the media <laughs> yeah, it does help that you get those things correct <laughs> but yeah so she was like a, a small town reporter that just she yeah, even got basically got gifted the story of like the first mm. encounter and then she just mm. put it out there um, and it just seemed like it just seemed to steam steamroll all the way through the community. Yeah, she for actually quite a thought, number of years. I'm mean, supposed to jump in ahead a little bit, but she actually thought that she was going to be putting it to bed, as it were. Like her book and her article was going to be sort of, p- p- you know, putting a, a thumbnail in it and being like, right, that's it. Now it's done. Yeah. This is what I've shown. You know, there's well, no need to kind of go on about it. Well, but she that, didn't even get round to the book until what 2003. And uh, yes, yeah. yeah so, so the article as well. Yeah. Um, which which she came first, and yeah, she was hoping it would kind of put a, a sort of attack in it, and and that would be it. But mm. it actually had the complete opposite effect. People kind of fed off of it and ran with it, and yeah, and then all these other, then you know, all these other stories and sightings, encounters, and everything sort of came about, and not just from you know Wisconsin, but from neighbouring you know states as well. Yeah, yeah. More um, importantly, it seems like it's all <coughs> happened. Seems to have happened in uh, Woolworth. County, which is where For the most part, yeah. Elkhorn is. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. And Bray Road is just yeah. outside of that. Um mm. and yeah, it's, it seems like it all this stuff over the past when was the first sighting really? Like the first So the first one official well, this is kind of under contention really. From what I can find, the general consensus seems to be that the first reported sighting took place in nineteen thirty six, mm. which I'll come on to shortly. Yeah. Um but I've since also read a lot of um a lot of articles that seem to suggest that the, the the area has been haunted by this beast since the sort of the late eighteen hundreds. Yeah, but I can't I couldn't really find enough to kind of help corroborate that. Um, but okay. there was a lot of there's a lot of theory sort of to it, and it kind of stems from um, Native American um, folklore. Yeah, again, it links in with the idea of the skinwalker and everything else yes, like that. Basically, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I couldn't really find anything. You know, like with the skinwalker, there wasn't like a story. From the Native American culture to kind of help support the mm. the claim that it's been going on since as far back as I think it was like eighteen eighty or something. I think if I remember wow. rightly, eighteen eighty eight something. So for yeah, for quite some time before this, you know, first reported sighting. Mm. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, mid nineteen thirties seems to be when it all you know sort of properly. Yeah. I, I don't know what the off. I don't know what the tribe is that would no. usually be um, in that area of Wisconsin, but the Navajo are. Well, they're much further south, yeah, aren't they? You know, mm. we're, we're being around Skinwalker Ranch and, and the such, yeah. Um, so and it seems like the Skinwalker itself is predominantly a Navajo exclusive, yes, legend as yeah, well, guess, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, so well, I'll, I'll sort of go back to the beginning, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's always um, a good place to start, which is always a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for those that don't know, the Beast of Bray Road or the Bray Road Beast or even the Wisconsin Werewolf is a supposed uh, humanoid wolf-like creature. Um, it has reportedly been seen in or near the rural community of Elkhorn, Woolworth County, Wisconsin. Um, the name comes from the uh, farm slash country road where the creature was first sighted. Um, it gained... A little bit more popularity in the 80s and 90s when a, a local reporter, as we've mentioned, Linda Godfrey, uh, was assigned to write an article um, noting the witnesses' encounters. She went in as a complete skeptic, um, you know, just wanted to be kind of the lead reporter on a, on a story. Um, and that was really kind of her own interest, her own personal gain, um, but came out, you know, quite a firm believer following the sincerity, sincerity sorry, of their accounts. Um, she, you know, kind of just got the, you know, the feeling, um, 
you know, quite soon into talking to these people that they were genuine, you know, that she could, as they were retelling their encounter, whether it be a sighting or whatever, um, you know, she said that, uh, you know, some of them would go, you know, white as a ghost, the colour would, you know, drain from them, you know, some of them would start crying, you know, in, in some recalling those memories. Re as they were recalling it, it was mm. like they were reliving it as they were doing so. Um, and yeah, and, and that's why she was like, well, look, I, I have, I've not had my own personal experience, mm. but she almost like, she almost felt as though she had from, you know, talking to these other people. Um, uh, and so, yeah, and so she wrote a number of um, articles, um, you know, around that time. Um, and then obviously following that, there was the book a lot later, um, The Beast of Bray Road, Tailing Wisconsin's Werewolf. Um, which I've uh, like the two hundred other books <laughs> that, that we've that we've <laughs> yeah. referenced. It's uh, it's been added to my uh, Amazon <laughs> basket, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is where it will probably firmly stay for quite some time. <laughs> I was gonna say your basket's pretty quick, yeah, yeah pretty big, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <brave. laughs> you'll be glad to hear that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, now, as we briefly mentioned in our last episode, um, it is similar to uh, the Dogman from the neighbouring state of Michigan. Like the Dogman, the Beast of Bray Road is described as being between six to seven feet tall um, with a humanoid-style body. It is covered in fur or hair um, and has a head resembling that of either a bear or a wolf. Um, a German although Shepherd German Shepherd came up quite a lot mm. when we actually um, researched this uh, specifically. That seemed to be a lot of the uh, same reference that a lot of the witnesses used. Um, and yeah, when you look at a lot of the depictions and stuff, it does have that characteristic well, yeah. kind of German shout and snuff. Yeah. yeah, they very much have a very similar mm. structure to, to yeah. wild wolves anyway, yeah. they say. So. Yeah, so I get where that um, sort of came from. Um, it's mostly reported to move on its uh, two hind legs, um, but also, of course, all four um, at some point, which uh, has cropped up in a couple of... Um, a couple of the encounters that I've, I've made notes of. Mm. Um, one of which is, uh, as we've already referenced, the uh, the first reported sighting, um, which took place back in 1936. <clears throat> um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Mark Shackleman um, arrived at St. Coletta School for Exceptional Children. Um, oh, yeah. Which, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely like the Wisconsin... Was it Xavier's School for the Gifted or something? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or Miss Peregrine's School for uh, Peculiar Children. Yeah, that's the like one. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a little, a little before midnight that he uh, arrived for his uh, shift. He was a night watchman, um, and so he would patrol the grounds every night. Uh, the school was located within the grounds of an old convent. Um, it also included masses of open fields that were preserved um, for Native American burial grounds uh, and they were clearly kind of marked out mm. you know they, they're sort of the uh it looked like sort of stones marking out the sort of the around the particular you know area and there was a couple you know sort of quite mm. close together which is where this um where this experience actually uh takes place um so that night uh mark was crossing these fields um when he saw a shadow moving up ahead he squinted to see what it was um he did carry a torch um that hadn't used it at this point, so he was just relying on, on his own eyesight. Mm. Um, wh when he looked, he saw a, a hunched form on all fours digging into one of the, the mounds. Right. Um, with the way it was digging, um, you could be forgiven for thinking it was a dog, but even from that distance that he was, he could tell that it was much larger. Mm. Um, suddenly, the creature looked at Mark stood up, um, it's, he said it stood at over you know, six feet tall, with a muscular torso covered in fur. Its face was that of a canine, and a low growl echoed across the field. Um, and he could also smell uh, rotting meat. Um, Mark took a step back, um, uh, and then it really aggressively uh, turned around and ran off into the surrounding woods. Mm. Um Remarkably, <laughs> Mark went back the next night, <laughs> uh, and he patrolled. <laughs> he patrolled the grounds again, uh, and when he came to the same field, um, there again was the same creature uh, digging at the same mound. 
Um, this time, he gripped his uh, flashlight and pointed it at the creature. Again, it stood up, looking directly at Mark, um, but this time, it opened its mouth. At this point, he noticed the long fangs hanging down you know, from its mouth either side. The creature growled at him, and apparently its speech was half human and half creature. They did, in the documentary, I don't know if you remember, they did play a sort of a sound bite to kind of to help suggest kind of what it sounded like. Yeah. I'm not going to do an impression, but if, no. you, if you imagine a dog growling and then trying to talk what was the within word? it. What was the word? Gerada? Is G- it Gadara? Gadara. Gadara. No. Yeah, which is, which is a, a biblical... A biblical Gar- town, wasn't it? It wasn't Garuda, was it? Gar- Gar- it was even something like that. Garuda. It was a biblical term, yeah, though, wasn't it? It was a biblical term that it that it said kind of over and over again, and it was kind of like a, a lowly growl as it mm. said this word, sort of under the yeah, under the sort of the noise that it was making. Um, and again, it didn't hang around for long. Um, the creature turned and ran back into the the woods. Um, this Gone. is the interesting thing. I don't want to get too ahead of the game. But this is the interesting <laughs> thing. It seems to just run away. Yes. It seems to want to run away rather than <clears throat> attack yeah, or well, anything like that. Like, yeah. You get. It's not there to attack. It's there essentially minding its own business. Well, it's and, sort of like, like when you come across like a mountain lion or something like that. Yeah. Like you come across a mountain lion on the trail and it's going for you. It's going you. for you. Yeah. 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 Like, it, like you're backing up. You're backing. You I've seen them. so many yeah. videos of that, of people shitting themselves because they've got this mountain lion coming towards them. It's after them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not backing down. No. And no. I mean, that's cats in general. That's just, yeah. that's just cats. It's bastards. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're kind of on the same wavelength with that. We're getting off the fence on that. Pets of Satan. Yeah. Cat, cats are bastards. <laughs> Sorry. All the, uh, all the cat lovers out there. Yeah. All the cat lovers out there. But um, yeah, I grew up with, with quite a large tomcat and he was a bastard. <laughs> he was a bastard. He was, he was so big. He used to go and sit on the, um, the playground opposite. Like mm. we lived opposite a school, mm. Holy Family in, uh, in Benfleet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, you could see him out of the window. He'd sit right in the middle and he'd wait for foxes to come out. And he'd just sit there, <laughs> wait for the fox to come near and he'd go for it. Like that, what, what cats? Like, like go uh, for foxes. Well, he, was, he was that big, didn't he? He used to wear like DMs and he had tattoos as well. <laughs> <laughs> he used to wear a little string vest and... <laughs> yeah, he was an hard bastard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he'd go, out, go out there and beat up the mods. If he wasn't covered in fur, he'd have a skinhead. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> but um, but no, you're right. It, 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 they would typically, you know, move away, run off. You know, they wouldn't look to, you know, interact or you know, anything like that. Really, which was you know similar to the accounts of you know the the dog man on a lot of the sightings where someone you know either got up close or, you know, very rarely were they you know sort of aggressive. Mm. Uh, they might have defended territory, uh, you know, by sort of showing their strength in in some you know way, but. Yeah, otherwise they weren't looking to, um, yeah, attack humans. They're there for a purpose. They're there, you know, sort of minding their own business, and that's what they were sort of looking to looking to do, really. Um, now, interestingly, Mark never saw that creature again, but obviously continued to patrol the, the grounds. Um, but the, the experience obviously stayed with him um, for years. Um, now, interestingly, this, I think this came to light after... Linda did her article because mm. the son or daughter of Mark got in touch with her and said, like, I've just read your article mm. and it sounds, you know, freakishly similar to, you know, what my dad experienced 30, 40 years, you know, prior. And that's so that's how this, I think, then came to light, was off the back of that. Gotcha. Because they thought they were probably, you know, like the only ones to, you know, experience it. But yeah, in actual would. fact, they weren't, you well, know, yeah. once this article came out. So, you know, thankfully she did that because then, you know, well, even, now we know about even it. Even today, I mean, the, people are reluctant to come forward with their stories of, of various cryptids and whatnot. It, with yeah, of the, course. The ridicule even with, like, and... the, well, the anonymity that you get with the internet. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, at the moment, in a bit of a, a Facebook spat with someone because oh, right. on, on one of the cryptid pages because it just seems like... <laughs> What you want the cryptid page for if you're really calling people for their stories? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, the stories might be real. They might not be real. Mm. Just leave it at that. Yeah. Like, what's, 
Why? What do you gain from discounting someone's experience? You know, you weren't well, there. You it's didn't a full on attack, to be honest. And it's just mm. like there's no need for it. No, you know, maybe their their experience is genuine. Yeah, why be on that sort of page if you're going to be that close minded? It seems counterproductive. Yeah, doesn't it really? It does. Yeah, and that's coming from someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> You've opened up your mind a lot in the past eighteen months. I'm very yeah, surprised. At just, it. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just like I just don't understand it. It's yeah. that, like even even in this day and age. Mm people are still unlikely to come forward with their stories. So back then, before the internet, before that anonymity, mm. it's definitely not going to, they're definitely not going to come. You're not going to, unless you've got, you know, real good reason. Mm. Um, and, you know, and that's why I think, you know, as, aside from, you know, the criteria and the, the circumstances, I think mm. that's why a lot of these, you know, should really be taken on their merit, you know, unless, you know, unless proven otherwise. Because, um, I mean, that's all we've got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you, uh, you know. what I was saying um, up at last episode or a couple of episodes uh, ago, you, in, it seems like people are having existential experiences with when they come across these cryptids and mm. whatnot. And you can't quantify that. You can't no. scientifically test it to the degree that most to people would necessarily yeah. think. However, yeah. there, there is a way that they've been able to quantify spirituality for instance um yeah. but that's that's that book that i keep mentioning yeah. uh, the awakened brain seriously mm. go and read it guys uh phenomenal um incredible findings i think i've added it to a audible yeah i think yeah download but it, it was like 19 hours or something yeah something like that so i've not uh, mate oh, <laughs> I honestly started. honestly it's so <laughs> worthwhile because i've i've coming toward the end of it mm. and she details all of her findings mm. and they've got actual print offs of MRI scans of oh, wow. um, uh, three generations of data, basically. Wow. Okay. So their findings are incredible. Go check it out, mm. guys. Honestly. Yeah, no, definitely. No, well, I, I definitely will. Um, Lisa Miller. Lisa Miller. At some point. PhD. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just off the back of that, just quickly, one of the things that was quite apparent in, in, in these experiences and also, the, you know, the Dogman ones. Similar to the trolls episode as well, which is what I kind of harken back to, mm. was the emotional, um, the the sort of the emotional response that a lot of these people had, you know, to what they saw. It wasn't necessarily like fear, or I suppose it was fear, but not in the sense that you know they were being threatened or that they were going to come to any harm. It was more so that initial fear of, you know, what the hell is that? But mm. then it was more so a case of, like the, the creature was giving them a message or trying to impart a warning on them or something yeah. like that. You know, like with the, Don't you know, talk about this or I'll find, I yeah. could, I could jump on your car, rip your car apart and get you. I could rip your head off, but I'm, I'm not going to yeah. just take this as a warning. You mm. know, I'm going to go my way, you go yours and you know, we'll all be okay. Don't do anything stupid and I, and I won't sort of thing. Mm. It's like you the know. real hard nut looking at you from across the room, catching your eye and you go, oh, okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I got <laughs> Julie <the> noted. <laughs> got the message. I will pipe Loud down. Loud and clear, Squire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, isn't it's it? That, it was that kind of thing. And that was um, something that I thought was interesting um, on both this and the, the dog man. Mm. It's um, a language without words. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's like they both, whether it was telepathic, whether it was just the energy, whether it was uh, just clearly an emotion that was being transferred, mm. whatever it was, they were all more or less experiencing the same thing. And it was just like, look, I'm not here to hurt you you're you're of no interest to me but don't do anything daft and i'll just go about my business you know it was that kind of mm. sort of and that that seemed to be a running theme in a lot of these um that i, th I thought was quite I mean, interesting which they, also linked back to what the same experiences of the the trolls yeah um that we covered they the road know, troll the, wasn't it the, the road trolls yeah mm. yeah there's yeah, um, the road trolls uh, specifically yeah well if that is the case if that if this cryptid is having that thought process, you'd rather mm. that than can I eat it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is what bears do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bears just look at you and think, can I eat that? Yeah, I reckon I'll, I could, I'll give it a I go. Could take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If push comes nope. to shove. <laughs> I reckon I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but so, yeah, just to um, yeah, finish, finish that bit, I guess. Um, yeah, go for it. Lin one of the findings that, that Linda had, or, or one of her beliefs, um, was that some of the witnesses um, she believed were seeing a physical creature, like they were actually seeing a physical bipedal dog man, you know, sort of on their land or, or you know, the side of the road, wherever it may be. Mm. But then others were actually seeing a phantom or, you know, uh, a supernatural entity, something that took that form. 
um, mm. whether it was a way of trickery, whether it was to disguise its actual form or whatever, you know, I don't, but that was, she's, she seems to be kind of it's very multifaceted. Torn, yeah. Isn't it? Is this, mm. that's something that, because I, I watched the, the same documentary. Um, yes, yeah. The, the uh, Bray Road Beast. That's it, which yeah, is done by the uh, small town monsters uh, right. guys. Yeah, yeah. And I think I've got a Kickstarter going at the moment for other documentaries that they're looking to do. They have, yeah. yeah. They're very good. They are very, good. very well yeah. put together, very mm. um, well shot. Yes. Um, there's some interesting animations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's one where it's running alongside the car and you think, use your front paws and all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> see, like, yeah. It's like he's running yeah. like you say bolt there. Yeah, that's it, <laughs> but, yeah. But otherwise, uh, that, no, that that's would good. be my only sort of criticism of it because mm. very, very well put together, very well structured. Yeah. And gives a lot of information. I mean, I, 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 what I could do, I could watch through it at the very least. Oh, I could sit and watch it and it wasn't, you know, painful to watch. It was actually really good. I mean, the, mm. I suppose the nice thing was for me, is, you know, just a bit of confirmation was that it, it didn't kind of throw up anything that I didn't already know. So mm. it was just kind of, you know, actually watching it, confirming that, but also hearing some of it from the horse's mouth, as it were. So obviously Linda Godfrey's featured quite heavily in it. Yeah. And a couple of the initial... Um, uh, you know, I was going to say characters, <laughs> the initial uh, the initial people that that were involved in her article yep. and, and whatever, and the witnesses and that they actually, you know, some of them actually came forward. Like the Bray family, for example, like actually, the you know. uh, the government official. Um, oh yeah, the, the animal control of, guy. Yeah, yeah. Who had a a, a melina folder. Yeah, labelled werewolf. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a city official. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, and that's, that's why Linda said, like, if someone a city official does that. Yeah, it's you take notice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, indeed. So, um, yeah, so oh, we might need some uh, old school journalists like Linda Godfrey today. We, Looking at we the may city well officials, do. Yeah. do something, you yeah. take notice of it, yeah. and you let everyone know. Bring, yeah, bring that back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Just yeah, saying. Exactly. Um, I, I know we touched on it a little earlier, but, um, you know, again, there's no real um, etymology uh, <laughs> to this one. <laughs> um, the name kind of suggests exactly what it is um, it's a beast. Found on Bray Road. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and that's, you know. Thanks for clearing that exactly. up. Exactly. Just in case anyone was confused at that, it just, <laughs> just wanted to clarify for Come you. On, I wanted to know what the natives called it. <laughs> oh, you should, you know, I expect more from you. There's no chance I'm, chance I'm going to pronounce that, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I, I guess we've kind of um, covered it, but just a, a, a quick sort of overview, I guess. So it was in December of 91 that Linda published the first ever article in the uh, the local newspaper with her witness statements and her own theory and whatnot um about a week or so later she received um a communication from uh steve cook who was the dj over at wtcm from traverse city michigan basically saying i've just read your article i think we've got the same thing over here but we're calling it dogman and so that and so they oh, that's yeah, how their gotcha. kind of interaction um uh sort of started um and Linda basically coined the name Beast of Bray Road when thinking of a title for the article um, because they were going with, you know, werewolf. Mm. Um, uh, I think that was pretty much the main thing they were going for, werewolf. But because of the descriptions, it didn't quite match up to what everyone believed a well, she, werewolf was, well, it's basically. Like what, like what you were saying, though, she was when she first went into it, she was a sceptic. So yes. technically, really, when she first wrote that, mm. that because um, she thought she was going to solve it, and but so that, she that refused her intention, to, yeah. She refused to call it a werewolf for yeah. or to the sensationalism of it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just like no, this is just a you know, this is just an odd coyote or an odd mm. wolf or something like that that's in the area yeah. that we need to you know put to bed. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. why she re like she refused to use werewolf or dog yeah. man and just went with beast because beast yeah. could be um, of this world. Well, it was particular. something that it was something that was catchy, but she also thought it was nondescript and vague enough that it could cover anything. Mm. So as you said, so if it was if it was a bear, a wolf, a coyote, or whatever, then the word beast could kind of be a blanket for all of those. So if it did get proven to be one or the other, mm. she'd be like, well, I said it was a beast and that's what it was. So she deliberately went with something fairly nondescript. And and also she felt that the descriptions and witness statements given didn't match that of what she believed a traditional werewolf to be. But there was also, as you say, the sensationalism of it and she didn't want to get kind of dragged into that 
sort of part of it. Although, I guess indirectly she has been now. Yeah, yeah, she has. <laughs> but at the time when she was a skeptic or more so of a skeptic, that was kind of her intention. Mm. So yeah, which I get. It's it's it makes her right perfect in, sense, isn't it? So it, it is reeled her right in. Yes, like yeah, all of this yeah. does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, now I've got. Um, I mean, you should recognise this because I think it came from the uh, documentary. Mm. Um, but as recent as 2016, 2017, a retired teacher um, bought farmland along Bray Road, um, knowing of the the sort of the the legend. Uh, it was actually a while before he had his own, you know, experience. I guess being an academic, and you sort of thought, wow, it's just all local mm. tales. You know, I don't really sort of believe. So it was actually quite a while before he started noticing stuff. Um, and Lee Hample was it? It was Lee Hample indeed. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, over the the coming years, he would set up cameras um, at his property to see if he could capture whatever it was he thought he was, you know, kind of seeing. Um, and his but his own experiences at this point um, had been just seeing pairs of red eyes ac- across the land. Mm. You know, so he'd be sort of on his porch or at one of his buildings, he'd look out. And normally in the in the brush in the distance, you would just see yeah a pair of sort of glowing red eyes kind of looking back at him, and that was the the main um, the main sort of extent of his experiences. But and so he, I think in a way to deliberately capture it, he was taking roadkill from outside his property mm. and putting it in certain locations around around the farm, baiting it, um, and yeah, baiting it. Mm. And he would put it in, like he would dig, it wasn't a trap per se in terms of trying to capture it, but he would sort of dig a hole, put the roadkill in said hole, and then set up a trail camera, you know, sort of nearby. Now, initially, he wasn't picking up anything, but the roadkill, you know, the animal would be, I think he said, sometimes 10 to 15 feet out of the hole and, and, and away from it. Mm. Um, but it would also have its abdomen or, or its um, stomach cut from its chin down to, I suppose it's where if they have belly buttons, but that, that kind yeah. of, yeah, so from chin <laughs> to belly button, that, kind, yeah. of, that right. kind of way, but straight down. And the entrails would be taken out and then left beside it in a kind of neatly arranged, you know, pile. Almost um, like an animal mutilation. Almost like an animal mutilation, absolutely. Mm. Um, and he said this happened with different, because, you know, obviously he, different roadkill was, you know, kind of thrown up. It's not like he went yeah. out and hunted these animals to use as bait. They were turning up on his property, so it would be, you know, I think, uh, I can't remember what you said it would be now, what the types of um, well, he had types uh, of animals. He but had it would, raccoons. That was it, raccoons and deers, I think, were two that he badgers used. Badgers as well and, that he used. Yeah, badgers, that was it. All roadkill, it wasn't stuff that yeah. he went out and No, he, he made shot. it clear that he didn't hunt any of it. It was quite literally roadkill outside of his uh, property that he would use. Um, and then, yeah, and you'd start to find these, um, yeah, these these animals would be removed from the, the the holes, seemingly undetected, but then it was almost ritualistic, you know, in terms of what he would then find, and it would be some ten fifteen feet, you know, away. He said the grass would be un, you know, trampled. There'd be no sort of prints in the mud or the soil. It was like somehow it just got picked up and you know dropped, dropped ten fifteen feet away, but it would be completely disemboweled. Um, and now, when when they say about the ritualistic side of it, it's that's something that crops up as a as a possible theory mm. for in in the documentary by like mm. some of the city officials. They believe that like teenagers mucking around with ritualistic magic and, and well, all that, that was the, that was one of the guy's theories, wasn't yeah. it? At first, he thought it was just yeah, kids. But then he but then he or was it Lee himself that thought it because then he kind of debunked his whoever it was debunked their own theory when they sort of said that. But, but you know, but there aren't tracks leading you know yeah. to and from you know, where he left the animals, whether it be human or, or otherwise. So he was quick to kind of debunk that, mm. and that, we can't, that sort of theory. We can't levitate, so... Well, no, exactly. Right yeah. <laughs> or can we? I need to get some sound bites. I know, yeah, we need to start using that machine, don't we? Um, so, yeah, so he'd set up these, these cameras, and for a while he wouldn't kind of bring anything up but then he started to examine you know the the footage um in in certain areas and he noticed that it actually looked quite sort of 
paranormal um, in the sense that the camera wouldn't pick up anything physical moving. But around the time after he laid the, the bait uh, and just before the bait was moved, although you don't see it move on the camera, you would see, I guess, what can only be described as a mist. A thick mist A as thick well. mist, not even like a fog or a, a smog or a, it's really dense. And it's like um, it's not like it just completely covers the land. It's localised to that. Just that area, because you can that see bit. off in the background and it's clear, clear as day and depending on the angle, but I know on one in particular to the right of the shot, clear as day. You could see the green grass, mm. you could see everything up ahead and the, the brush and whatever. But this localised area, as you say, on the I think it was on the left-hand side of this particular shot, it was just a thick you know, mist. I guess for anyone who's seen the film Mist, the mist, yeah. when it kind of encapsulates the town and you, you can't see in front of your own you know, sort of thick. nose, it was that thick. Um, and it comes out of nowhere it, it sort of comes into shot you know it kind of swells and sort of moves around and then it it sort of dissipates um and you know moves out of shot and then not long after that based on the time stamp is then when um he would notice that the animal had been you know sort of moved and then you know disemboweled and it's not like it was done necessarily for eating because like i say they'd, just, they'd be set in a little pile mm. on the floor next to it as though it was deliberate. Yeah. And if it was like... For so, whatever reason. Yeah, if, yeah. Any, if it was an animal that was picking these things up, then there would be chunks taken out of it, of like the, the thighs, um, yeah. the, 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 the meaty parts, the muscled parts of, mm. of these animals. And yeah. the deers, you know, the tongues would be taken out, the cheeks would be gone, yeah. the hides and everything. So, but none of this is happening. That's no, what, that's no, what that's sets this thing. apart yeah. from just finding a carcass, yeah. that these, these are animal mutilations because... Mm. It's not being eaten. No. It's almost like it's been not done for sport, but it's, it's been done for a reason, isn't it? It's been... Whatever that reason may be. Whatever that may be, yeah. Um, now, what um, Lee actually says in the documentary kind of fits in with my um, Bigfoot theory, but he he believes that it, whatever it is, travels between dimensions, mm. which is basically what that mist, like fog was. Um, and because that's the only way he can sort of explain how it gets onto his land undetected, does all this to the animals and then disappears undetected. Mm. Uh, I mean, I know we've picked up like the, you know, the, sm uh, the, the, the fog, the mist or whatever, but is that quite literally a smoke screen for whatever is coming through? It, yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. strong possibility. Yeah. It really is. I mean, the, the, the idea that paranormal activity comes hand in hand or the, Necessarily paranormal activity, high strangeness. Mm. High strangeness comes hand in hand with localized mist or fog. Mm. And when I mean localized, I mean literally like within to a section, like, like a 20, yeah. 20 meter square, yeah, sort of thing. That that localized, mm. it's it goes hand in hand. It, it's it does. Like, there are so many accounts of like this weird cloud of mist that just moves yeah. into, and it in some cases there's stories of this mist following people. Or almost like it's it's chasing them, yeah, sort of thing, and it, it it's like a I don't even know what to make of it. I don't even I don't, know what no. to even how to begin to even process seeing something like that. I yeah. mean, we get some really nice autumn mornings, mm. right, where you see the the the, the fog like mm. really low on the ground, with yeah. the grass on the fields, and it's beautiful. Right. Yeah, but I can't. I suppose it'd be like the it'd be like lost. With that black, that black, the black yeah, cloud that chased you through the jungle and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can't even comprehend something like that. No, no, but it's 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 believed to have you know sort of happened, and it's it's come up on his images. And it's a, it's got a, footage to show it. It's yeah. very very well document documented uh, phenomena as well. Yes. Yeah, this this rolling mist mm. that seems to have lights in it, or creatures come out of it, yeah. or creatures go into it, mm. and then the mist dissipates and yeah, gone. I think has doesn't it sometimes have a current, like an electrical, yes, sort of current to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There's a like, like lightning is happening within it. There's a strong, thing. yeah. There's a, in fact, mm. yeah. You're right. There's a strong connection with these uh, mist clouds and ball lightning. Mm. Ball lightning is a very very strange phenomena, and mm. I haven't actually seen it in person, but I've seen videos of it, and you're like, that can't possibly be real. <laughs> yeah. It's like an orb of of mm. lights. Yeah, that's just 
moving and seemingly intelligently mm. as well. Like it's not just like going in one direction, nice and slowly. It's like it's moving, it's turning left, right. It's, it's strafing or it's going up yeah, and yeah. down and, and whatnot. It's it's got like, a direction and a, a sort of a purpose to it as it yeah. as it travels. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. move quickly like quite as quickly as um, like orbs or anything like that, you know, that you see in, like, the paranormal documentaries yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. It's not yeah. quite like all no. where it's a bit more... All scattered and it's yeah. got a bit more of a sort of a, how do you explain it, um, pattern, I guess. A direction. Yeah. It's just got a bit more of a, a direction of a direct, to it. Like, yeah. it's going to somewhere or doing... It's, you know, following, it's not it just might all be over following shot. something. Like, yeah. It might be following something in the ground, like a power, like a power line, like a, like a ley line. Yeah, yeah. Not like a, a power cable or anything like that. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, it, the ball lightning is a very, very strange phenomenon, and it, it crops up in this sort of stuff. Mm. All yeah, it the does. Time. Yeah, yeah. These are the things where you, you tend to sort of find it as a as part of the phenomena, as part mm. of what is you know kind of happening in these um, sort of locations. But um, another sort of um, another sort of pattern with these sightings. Uh, of of the beasts is that they also link up with locations of Indian burial grounds mm. um, around the local area, um, and uh, pe- to the point where people believe that it's a manifestation of a uh, water spirit um, or a, a sort of an Indian water god mm. um, who is a guardian of um, gateways to the underworld. Uh, ah. And 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 they believe that the the dogman and the the beast of Bray Road are one of the same. It's basically the same creature, just travelling between the states. Well, that interdimensional. That instantly makes me think of um, the ancient Egyptian god Anubis, the god of the underworld. Mm. Straight away, and yeah. he's got the head of the it's head a of a jackal. Yeah, it's a dog man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And that's like that yeah, yeah. separates those two cultures at the very least, thousands of years mm. and thousands of miles. Different continents, the whole yeah. the whole lot. Absolutely, yeah. So that was something that I thought was quite interesting. Now, this that didn't come up in the documentary, I'm pretty sure, but this it was a, a kind of um, it was a, a sort of a comment made at the bottom of an article where it sort of detailed a lot of um, uh, sightings, mm. which were pretty much either here or there. Really, I've made a note of one of them, but a lot of yeah. them are pretty much the same. Someone lives on a farm, or you know, they see something in weird, a property with a lot of land. Yeah, they're out on their porch, they're out on their back deck. They look out and they see something crouching, mm. or you know, see eyes or something running. You know, it was all fairly kind of um, copy and paste sort of uh, you know stories. But you know, you're living in that you know sort of area, and you know, I suppose that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen. I suppose. Um, now we, we've we've sort of mentioned it. Well, so I suppose we've already covered this bit really but um mm. yeah basically the the bray road beast as 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 we've said was a documentary by small town monsters um which is available on amazon prime to us yeah. in the uk um which is where we watched it um and the thing that i actually liked which again it's a different um sort of mythology but it, it starts with the story of um Lyce- is it lycian lycian um, like Ian, yeah. who's uh, cursed by Zeus for killing his youngest son um, and he's sent to Earth to forever roam as a lycan, which we now know is mm. basically a werewolf. Yeah. Um, it's where the, the, the word lycanthrope well, derives yeah, from. It comes and, from his hymn, yeah. Yeah. It's, he was um, banished. I know it's not Egyptian, which I know you just alluded to, but it's a similar kind of certainly mythology, very, gods and Mediterranean whatever. at the very yeah. least. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I thought, yeah, I quite, uh, I quite like that. But um, and certainly, at one point, sorry to butt in, on, but no, certainly ahead, at yeah. one point, all these, all those Mediterranean cultures were linked. They were yeah, I'm sure they essentially yeah. one culture. Mm. Um, there's far too many similarities from these different peoples of yeah. the Mediterranean to, yeah. to to believe that they weren't For it to all be coincidence. Or yeah. oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just, there's yeah. too many. Yeah, um, but I do like the fact that Zeus is doing what he's doing here mm. you know taking a taking a break from all the raping yeah and all that so <laughs> yeah, exactly to come yeah. down and curse a geezer for, for killing his son kill, killing his son and serving serving which the meat. yeah i yeah. guess which is fair you yeah know. so you know silver lining to all gods <laughs> yeah you know, exactly at least you know he could take a break from the raping to come and smite someone for being naughty yeah exactly so, yeah absolutely well done zeus <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> kudos for that one yeah. um 
Now, what I thought was um, sort of interesting, and I think it um, kind of adds a bit of, um, you know, credence to the fact that there is a lot of high strangeness and, um, yeah, I guess just, just high strangeness in general is that he's, Wisconsin also has um, stories of elves, um, Bigfoot sightings, UFOs, and plenty of paranormal sightings as well, mm. which kind of all adds to the... Yeah, the yeah. high strangeness of, yeah, of what people see and experience, and there was also the uh, the Slender Man stabbing. Oh, yeah, so wasn't. I was it? just just going to say that. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> got to be like two minds. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Slender Man uh, stabbings happened only thirty miles from Elkhorn in uh, Wisconsin. Um, uh, what have I written here? Oh, and uh, yeah, there was um, again just following off of the. The uh, ritualistic mm. um, uh, sort of element that we've discussed about these um, is that the, uh, I didn't write too much more on it, but basically, there was uh, one guy um, got lured to a Milwaukee apartment where he was um, stabbed over 300 times um, in that same summer um, as the Slender Man um, killings. And that was believed to be a satanic ritual based on the location of the stab wounds, which when there's over 300 is got to be pretty much everywhere. <laughs> if you can count 300 individual ones, <laughs> yeah, then that's pretty much got to be everywhere. Well, they're going to hit some it, marks, really? aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, Throw enough so, at the wall, some of it's going to stick. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I thought that was quite, uh, quite interesting. Wow. It's not just, you know, this beast that they've got to lay claim to. Mm. They've got a whole host of other sort of cryptids. Um, we've gone over a lot of them, or we've gone over the main two, Bigfoot and, and elves sort of before, so I didn't want to kind of go into that too much and yeah, yeah, no doubt course. regurgitate a lot of it. But I thought just for kind of credence and credibility, if nothing else, then it just kind of explains that, look, there's more than just this going on. It's not just like a load of country bumpkins trying to, you know, bring tourism to their, you know, their little humble town. Yeah. Yeah, because it's... Yeah, there's shit going on everywhere. Well, that's <laughs> a good point, really, because toward the end of the documentary, it, it, it's, it's stated that Elkhorn seems to have moved on a bit from the Beast of Bray Road. And it's... The town has, but the, the tourists haven't. Yeah. Yeah, the, the town, they're, they're done with it. Like, yeah. It's not like Point Pleasant yeah. or anything like no. that, where they hold they a, a festival it. every year. Yeah. You know, it's it's like they're, they're done with it. They want to move on. Mm. Um, and they still get people coming by uh, trying to find the beast and, and, you know, and all this yeah. sort of stuff. And Absolutely. So it's not a tourist town. No, not by but, any stretch. No, no. Not, not as far as they're concerned. I mean, it, it does by extension, attract tourists who will literally drive up and down Bray Road of a night, you know, and pull over and try and, you know, hunt and spot stuff mm. and whatever, to the point where, you know, all the farmers along the road have set up like a neighbourhood watch. Yeah. <laughs> type, you know, type thing. So if one farmer spots someone on, the land. on their mate's yeah. land, they'll tell them, they'll be like, look, just say, no, you've got a load of, you know, a load of kids on your land or Get whatever. Get off my land! Get off my land, you, you bugger! <laughs> you bugger I'll, I'll set the hounds on you <laughs> get off my land yes, I, can, I, I can imagine exa that exact thing maybe just with a bit more of an American twang yeah to I reckon it. so maybe a different accent maybe <laughs> a different accent yeah, yeah. We're, we're only going off our own uh, experiences there guys yeah exactly so. yeah I, I don't I can't do the Wisconsin accent no no, I'm not, I'm not even going to try um, <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so that kind of um, that caps off the uh the, you know the, the kind of the documentary and the the kind of um the origins and the you know the birth of you know of this uh this beast um and uh yeah as i said i did find um a few sort of first-hand accounts a lot of them like i say are just pretty much you know the bread and butter type stuff that you would want you know they're on mm. their land late at night they, they happen to look out or, you know onto their fields and they, they see, see something some, lurching. They see something running through, and it's six foot tall. And that's the interesting it's, thing. It's that a lot of over all these decades, mm. and this is what Linda Godfrey also says. Over mm. all these decades, all of these stories have the same format. You know, they have mm. the same description of 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 the creature. Yes, albeit yeah. that the colours might be slightly different, and that's why. Mm. Certainly one yeah. of the, the people in the documentary says that they believe that it's not a paranormal thing and that it is a surviving um, animal with a surviving mm. population because there are different colours. Different colours to it, yeah. And, so it's breeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There's yeah. more. There's more of them. <laughs> they're, they're breeding. I think that was a, um, a cryptozoologist that they got 
um, I don't who I don't think was directly involved. Um, but he went there to investigate because he heard of all the experiences and oh, whatever, the, and then the, ended up having his the own guy one. with a lovely tan. Guy with a lovely tan. I don't. I can't remember. No. I can't remember what. I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> it looked like he'd be. It looked like he'd had a bath in gravy. He's like, <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> bit of oxo beef gravy. Yeah, exactly. Coming yeah. very brown. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I can't say I remember that specifically, he's but been yeah, holiday could have been in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he's a cryptozoologist, he'll spend all his time outside, wouldn't he? Well, so you'd have thought. You'd hope so. That yeah. or it's dirt. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, but yeah. So um, yeah, I found one um, one particular sort of first-hand account which I thought was um, which was quite. Uh, Quite compelling. Again, I, I like the ones that go into the detail. You know, they, they tell you kind of, you know, who was there, where they were. They mm. give you all the little minute details that you wouldn't necessarily think to, you know, give in this type of, you know, recalling of a in, in memory. You know, normally you just find, oh, yeah, no, I just, you know, I just saw this this mm. big dog man and they just concentrate on that. But they don't say, oh, you know, well, I was in this room in my house or, I, you know, it's all the little nuances to a story that I, I sort of look at and think, yeah, okay, I'm more inclined to believe you know, that one mm -hmm. than some of the others that just, you know, kind of waffle on for a bit of, uh, you know, sort of entertainment. But yeah, um, <laughs> this one that I've written down, I, I, I hope it comes from a younger person um, and you'll soon, you'll learn why. Right. Because <laughs> oh. when I first read it, I, I've, got I a bit it of, I've got a bit of a face on at the moment. Like, I thought it was That's weird. an odd thing to request. Just you'll get you'll get what I mean when I when I get to the bit. Because <laughs> okay. if it's an adult, it would be weird. <laughs> um, am, am I going to have to be ready with a bell? Possibly, possibly. We shall see. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, we'll see how I take it. Exactly. Yeah. The <laughs> <I'll be laughs> um, the story comes from uh, Franklin, Wisconsin, um, sometime between ninety seven and ninety eight. Um, the the, the, the family involved had just moved to a brand new subdivision, um, which uh, in real estate is basically where a giant piece of land is split up into multiple plots. Yeah. They're sold off and then people build on them. Yeah, basically. Gotcha. Um, their, their house was the only one built at that time. Um, and, in, you know, for a vast, you know, distance, it was just empty plots of just you know and, and then adjoining mm. farmland it's not what so we, it's, sparse it's not what we do here where a developer will buy a huge swathe of land and build break a load it into of houses. break it into plots and then build a load of houses and, and then, then sell them, them. Yeah. yeah they build them as they sell them sort of thing yeah um yeah, which like kind of makes sense yeah absolutely um in their yard um or back garden for us brits <laughs> um they had a running creek um and at the other side of said creek was uh, a brush, um, basically just a load of bushes and hedges and, and whatnot. Mm. Um, and they also had an old style wooden street light. So it was okay. it was quite old fashioned. So it was wooden, you know, sort of wooden post, almost like lantern looking um, type street light. And it, it cast the image that comes to head for me is um, in that scene in ET. Yes. Yeah. 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 I guess so. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and this one cast a particular orange hue across the very across much the, like the land. Yeah, very much like an ET. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good callback. I like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was a warm summer's night, uh, and they were having a, a sleepover with um, with one of their friends. They had the lights off and were playing hide and seek. <laughs> that's why I that's see. why I hope they're a younger kids because if they were like our age like if you and I had, well we wouldn't have sleepovers but if you crashed up <laughs> if you crashed up mine and we decided to turn the lights on and play hide and seek I'd be like well I'd be like that's probably the more concerning thing of this story than the, the neighbours will start talking <laughs> yeah well more so than they probably do already <laughs> but yeah that, that was okay. the that was the out of all of this that was the one detail that I thought that's a bit weird when, when was this? 97. Oh, it's 20th century, not quite the 21st century. Yeah. Well, I suppose <laughs> yeah. they were still doing that in the 20th century. Yeah, true. So, yeah. yeah, so that, yeah, so of all bring, the things... Bring your own batteries. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. So, yeah, out of all of this that transpires, that was the one thing that made you think, mm. Mm, hold on a minute. Is this an adult account? That's weird. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they... Um, so the person that's re so there's two of them. The person that, that he's retelling this uh, story um, went out into their um, sunroom, 
um, which again for us in the UK is basically a conservatory, yep. um, presumably to hide. Um, and they saw something um, crouched over, um, illuminated through the brush by the um, orange hue of the street light. Um, now this person has a 140 pound Akita um, who, when it stands on its hind legs, is easily about six foot. Um, and they could tell that whatever this thing was that they were looking at would dwarf their dog. Wow. 140 pound Akita <laughs> would be dwarfed by whatever they were seeing. I mean, they're big dogs anyway. Yeah, I know, exactly, yeah. So whatever they were seeing would dwarf this dog. Wow. From from what they've, um, yeah, sort of from what they've said. Um, the, the creature's... Um, Hind legs were thick and muscular, like a man's, but its body tapered at the abdomen, and it had the head like a dog or wolf. Um, they called out to their friend, saying pretty much what any of us would say in that moment, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, but try not to make much noise. That's probably, what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, the, the two of them watched it for, you know, quite some time, about 30 minutes, basically just hunched over um, until one of their dads came in to see what they were doing. Um, by the sounds of it, they were up past their bedtime. <laughs> they shouldn't have been up playing hide and seek. This is why I hope it was <laughs> kids. <laughs> That's why you don't, don't bring your parents to those sort of parties. Well, and that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that. Yeah, Mr. Buzzkill. <laughs> time for bed. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so... They asked their dad the same question. They pass the parcel. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Where's the chilli and ice cream? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so so they, they asked their dad um, what it was, to which he responds, I, I don't know. I, you know, he's quite confused. He was just like, I have no idea. So in typical, you know, dad fashion, um, he goes straight into dad mode, grabs his torch and heads outside to you know, inspect. <laughs> um, he stood on their drive um, and shone the, the torch at what they were looking at. It looked at them momentarily before taking off into the brush, but upright on its hind legs. Um, they likened it to um, a sprinter at the starting block. So if you imagine when they're, you know, when they're sort of on all fours, uh, just before they kind of launch into the... Spider-Man post. Into the... Yeah, kind of, yeah, to an extent, I guess, mm. yeah. Um, so that's how it was, that's how it kind of was hunched over on their land. And as soon as he kind of shone the torch, it was like, huh? And then Wing. bolted, yeah. Um, uh, their dad said that he could hear it splashing through their creek at the, in sort of the edge of their property before disappearing further into the, the sort of the, the brush on the other side. Mm. Um, uh, and that was, th- th- that one I thought was, the best one of the ones I yeah, found. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, mostly because there was a bit that made me laugh, but also just because <laughs> there were other details that some of the others didn't have. Yeah. Um, you know, some were just like, oh, yeah, I was standing on my porch and, yeah, there were some red eyes looking at me and, and it, it could have been anything. stood up and walked off. Yeah, it, it could have been anything. Um, so I kind of discounted those. Um, now, as of last night, um, I actually watched, um, I had the, the fortune or, or misfortune of um, watching a uh, feature film <laughs> that's free to view on uh, on YouTube. Oh, you were telling me about this before we yeah. before we got in here. Called um, Beast of Bray Road. Um, <laughs> no, it's interesting because it opens by saying that it's based on a true story, but <laughs> you haven't found there aren't, story. There aren't really any elements. <laughs> there aren't any elements to it that kind of harken back to the the Bray Road. Incidents. They yeah. basically just used it for creative license. Gotcha. Um, which, which is you know, it's fair game. Um, that's, but like, it's, that's like the Annabelle films, saying it's based yeah, on true basi- events. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's basically a, a low budget monster film. Um, cool. It, it makes Sharknado look like look Oscar worthy. Oh, brilliant! That, that it's it's delightfully shit. <laughs> it's one of them like good shit films. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I love yeah, these. Things. I mean, the acting. Dear yeah, Lord, um, yeah. it was made in 2005, uh, and it is set in Woolworth County, um, you know, Wisconsin. You know, some of the actual real life people. Um, oh, so it's filmed on location as well, was it? Or? Yeah, I, not that they ever 
actually showed Bray Road from what I can remember. <laughs> but it was the, it was like it was basically the Elkhorn town, gotcha. like the, you know, the, the, where people lived and like the the uh, like tavern saloon yeah, bar yeah, type gotcha. thing. You know, the typical American kind of uh, biker bar. Yeah. Right, like shit hole with like with a pool table and spit and sawdust type yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. That was kind of like the main focal point of the the film. But yeah, there, there is a, a character who pops up in it for about ten seconds, who I'm pretty sure was a reference to um, like Linda Godfrey, um, the the animal control guy. I think a, a character kind of loosely based on him pops up again for just like a, a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, otherwise it was. Um, original material <laughs> in, uh, Excellent. in quotation marks. Oh, I love these sort of um, films. But yeah, it was basically just a monster film. So it was, it, it, I mean, you could guess the ending. I mean, I think I guessed the ending that what was that, about 20 minutes in. Yeah. Um, I won't say what it was just in case you or any I others. I will be watching it. Yeah. In case you or any others 100%. like watch it, but the, the, the ending is, is quite um, obvious. But yeah, it's basically like a, a, a low, a low key, it's a typical story, you know, a, a, a sort of disgraced um, big city cop gets sent out to be a sheriff in some country bumpkin town in the, what was it, bumfucker nowhere. Bumfuck nowhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> where he's like the new man about town and, you know, he's coming with his new theories. And he's, he's coming like, in with his fancy cop from a fancy town, <laughs> from a fancy most of, city. Considering Wisconsin, yeah. I don't think has that accent. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> most of them did. In the, just, yeah. <laughs> Well, they certainly come across with that kind of oh, like, God no. damn boy. Oh, God. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah it, it was, I mean, it was, it was bad, but. We like our cheese up here and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, was, there wasn't a single like cheese farmer or dairy farmer in the film at all. And I was just like, come on, man. Like, yeah. you in Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin. <laughs> like, come on. So that was. Uh, we know, we, at least we know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was a missed opportunity. It really um, was. But, um. But no, it, it was good. If you like monster movies and you like a good shit film, yeah, then it's definitely worth watching. I mean, it was only an hour and six minutes, I think. So it's a it's oh, a it's brilliant. a short feature yeah. film. Um, I didn't I didn't watch it thinking I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn something new. Well, today. I certainly didn't watch it thinking I was going to learn something new, <laughs> and I certainly didn't watch it expecting anything other than it was going to be uh, crap. Yeah. I mean, my better half was um, sitting watching something else on her um, on her tablet, and we both laughed at the same point. Yeah. But I I sort of looked, I I laughed, and I looked to the the side, and she just looked at me, shaking her head, laughing. So even she knew it was crap. Yeah, and she hates those films. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sa- yeah. My other half, she she's the same, Sam. She's. But I think she's she was like more that. laughing at me for the fact that I was um, watching it. Yeah, because when she because she you know she got up and went to bed when it was still on. And she went, I can't believe you're still watching this. <laughs> and just walked <laughs> yeah. off. I was like, you know, it's for the content, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fucking martyr, you. I know. I'm doing it for you guys. So it's, it's, it's what I do. It's the kind do, of guy I am. Tell you what, though. This is why I love uh, Amazon Prime, right? Oh, yeah. Amazon Prime. Every now and then, I'll go onto Amazon Prime and I'll find a really shit B-movie monster movie sort yeah. of thing. And I'll watch the trailer. Yeah. And then when you go, you may also like this. I'll go down to the next oh, one. Yeah. Oh, mate, I will spend hours watching trailers. My watch list. Pissing myself. Because I, I love them. I love just how shit they are. Oh, mate, they're fantastic. I mean, my watch list on Amazon Prime is made up purely of those. So I found I found one which is about a priest that turns into a velociraptor. Yeah. Velocipasta. <laughs> Velocipasta, that's yeah. it. And I found that and I just thought, that is just too shit to not watch. Oh, and no, so right. I, I added it to my, but yeah. then as you say, it then comes up saying people who watch this also watched. And then it was, I think there's one about- A yeah, dickhead like this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Dickheads to give it to the end. Yes. <laughs> and then it was one that, I think it was one about a killer armchair. Yes, that came killer up. sofa. Uh, yep. That's from New Zealand. That is, yep. I actually I've watched not seen that. that one yet. It's hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's so good because if people start dying, and his girl has you know inherited this this this. Uh, it's like a lazy boy chair. Yeah. <laughs> she looks yeah, up. At, yeah. She looks up at her window at one point, and the chair is standing there in the window watching her. <laughs> oh mate, I've got to watch it. And then there's one. There's like I think there's one called like Ghost Shark. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's even one. It's like Sharknado, but land it's, shark. It's in the Himalayas, so it's like snow shark. Snow shark, yeah, snow shark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're brilliant. It's just all of it, and I was just like, "Yep, add, yep, 
Ad. There was one. Yep. Ad. There was one that I watched. Um, it was Nazis at the center of the earth. And, oh, mate, it <laughs> I think was, I've seen it that. It was incredible. It had, um, it had Jake Busey in it. Oh, I'm watching. Yeah. It had Jake Busey uh, in it. It's got a Busey in it. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all but it was in. so good. There's there's bits in it where it cuts from like the live action, small studio, Red Dwarf style yeah, sort yeah. of set. Exactly. To yeah. then like CGI, but like, I'm talking like PlayStation 1 CGI, maybe PlayStation 2 CGI. Yeah, like if we it, did it. Oh, definitely. <laughs> With our editing skills. Yeah, <laughs> if we did it. There's one point where there's five characters walking in, like it's all the live action stuff. Then it cuts to this big hanger thing and all the CGI and there's only four people walking. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't afford the CGI for the fifth one. Yeah, they couldn't afford the fifth person. So you got, kill, got killed off behind None the of them scenes. look like them though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, like, man. cut all the spoilers and everything. Um, Hitler survives. In and, he's living, and he's living in the... He's living, of, he's living in, in Antarctica. But Which funny you say spoilers, but that's what people think actually happened, which is why we're not allowed to go to Antarctica. Yeah. Because the Nazis... Are protecting it because that's where he was. I mean, probably not now. He'd be dead by now. But yeah, that's the, they reckon he retreated there. Oh mate, yeah. yeah, I could go into that. Yeah. Operation High Jump and all of that sort of stuff. Oh, Absolutely we will be incredible. Oh, we'll go over but, it at some point. I'm sure. Yeah, it's just like Hitler. Yeah. Hitler survives as like a head in a jar, like Futurama style. <laughs> God, <laughs> <laughs> and they've got to find the pure German DNA to to uh, revive. The, yeah, yeah, mate, you over here. Yeah, <laughs> to revive Hitler's head, even though he's Austrian, <laughs> and then they put his head on a giant robot. <laughs> like, was it like Robocop Two? When yeah. they put the guy in the um, oh, the mate. I can't think what they call it now. The rope, the walking robot thing with the they put his face on there. Yes, yeah, I, oh, remember, I can't yeah, remember what they I called it, they but called yeah. It. Mate, it's brilliant. I mean, I'm sure there's one as just going well off topic, but I'm sure there's one as well where I'm sure as a part of it, it was like Nazis on the moon or Nazis in space. I'm pretty sure it's called like the Iron Curtain in, or oh, something no, no, like that. Um, the, the, and the coming race. Um, I don't know, but they've got Hitler. Iron Sky. The, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I might yeah, be called Iron that. Sky. Yeah, they've got. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've got. Hitler riding a dinosaur. A T-Rex. A T-Rex. Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. is that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the moon. <laughs> On the moon. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, no, he's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that that's just... brilliant. That's actually, that's a comic book. That's a comic book adaptation. That's, that's hilarious. The Iron Sky comic book and, and, right. and the film's coming after it because um, Iron Sky 2, it's got Tom Green in it. You're kidding. It's got Tom Green in it. Yeah. And he's the second one. Yeah. Yes, I mean, yes, how do you yes. follow that? <laughs> but they've got Tom Green in it. Yeah. Dad, you would you like some sausage? Dad, Dad you would you like, like some sausages? sausages? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get inside the T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I've, I've got to, yeah, I've got to start watching something. Do you know, I think we should, you know, as an extension of the podcast, we should do a, a shit film review or something. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I am so up for that. <laughs> we should do we it. We each watch our own film and then yeah. we come and we, rev- yeah, we review it. we do it. a review of it, yeah. Yeah, guys, if you want to hear a bit of that. Yeah. Let us know if you reckon that's uh, something you'd want to watch. If Even if it's not, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get out the mic, though. We're, we're doing it anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah Tough. This, yeah. <laughs> But, this is um, for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> this is for our enjoyment. Yeah, um, but yeah, we went well off track there. But um, nah. but yeah, it was a um, yeah, it was a delightfully crap film. Um, but I would recommend anyone uh, watching it if you like monster films, if you've been at all interested in the uh, you know Beast of Bray Road uh, sort of accounts, um, you know, which I certainly have. And you know, like I said at the start, you know, we've 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 had a bit of fun with this one, and it's been nice to you know kind of look into something and you know and kind of uh yeah dive into it but it not be so full on mm. <laughs> i mean i enjoyed those ones don't get me yeah. wrong i thought they were excellent you know and we've we've had some you know similarly good you know you know reactions from you know sort of the listeners but um yeah it's nice to also just kind of go down and uh, go down the easier a lighter road route. or a bray light, road a bray, ooh, a bray <laughs> road very good pun intended <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so yes i think it's probably all joking aside, probably about time to uh, jump off that get off fence. the fence. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose I'll start. Go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think? Like, I would. Is there a duck in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't me. Honestly. Did you? I did. Yeah. 
<laughs> did you did you heard you heard that? I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it might it might be bad. It might be bad. Oh, it could be, yeah. I suppose it could be one. Yeah. It was like <laughs> we're not alone. <laughs> um yeah, I guess again, I, 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 it's a similar response. I'm probably gonna give on a lot of these, but I it would be remiss of me to uh, you know, discount, you know, these accounts mm. but believe some of the others, you know when you know there are so many similarities and so many similar origins and and you know kind of starting points and yeah i think for me um the, the bit that got me was the theory towards the end of the documentary although i was kind of already there anyway mm. um was the bit about the you know dimensional interdimensional you know sort of travel um you, you know and how they sort of pop up from you know, one point to another, seemingly undetected, mm. especially because it fed into you know kind of where I landed on the you know the the, the Bigfoot stuff. Yeah, and then you've obviously you know you got the Fey, you know elves and trolls and you know, everything else. It all seem to it seems to be affirming that theory for you, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I would say so. For me personally, it's certainly helping. You know, with that, with the you know the more evidence that is you know is kind of thrown up, and the more similarities there are with other, mm. you know, so being so you know, does it lend itself to I think a point that. um I made again in the way back in the Bigfoot episode is that, you know, do they, you know, do these entities take these forms, um, you know, based on what they think we will recognize or what we'll feel comfortable with or something that will disguise their, you know, true well, form. If that is their thinking, they're not doing very well. Not it. doing great, admittedly. <laughs> But is it not particularly comfortable with what we <laughs> no. say? <laughs> no, but is it a? I suppose what I mean is like is, you know, is it a disguise for mm. for what they actually look like? And this was the one, you know, the one that we see is the one they landed on, you know, sort of thing. So are they? So essentially, what I'm saying in a roundabout way is, you know, Bigfoot, Dogman, Skinwalker, Beast of Bray Road, everything. Are they all one of the same? But they just take different. <laughs> take different forms, maybe depending on where they are. Th um, so the culture, the, the location, the, you know, mm. the, the weather, I don't know, the, the you know, the, the energy, you know, is there a greater energy in some places than others? So they can manifest into a different, That's a possibility. you know, a different form, a bigger form, maybe one that they've got more you know, sort of control of as I, a, I, as I a theory. You, I think you are onto something there with, with, with your theory, uh, simply because of how often, these cryptids are linked with strange lights. Yes. In particular. Yeah. Now, it, this is my thinking with regards to, to, to what you're saying. If you think about, again, going with like pop culture and stuff like this, so if you think about the, the movie It mm. and Pennywise. Yeah. So the Pennywise, the dancing clown, mm. is what is uh, manifested. But when you see Pennywise's true form, it's mm. the deadlights. Yeah. Now the deadlights is what hypnotizes the people when they look in his mouth yeah, and, the and all that. The, the 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 three spheres, isn't it? That's that kind right. Of, yeah. Yeah. So in in Stephen King's novel, the deadlights are Pennywise's true form. Mm. Now, if you take that as as the the possible theory that the true form of all of these various different creatures that that we see that are interdimensional, and you know, Pennywise is interdimensional. Mm. Um, then potentially the the lights that people see mm. around these these cryptids and yeah. around these creatures and such because they are often linked very heavily with strange lights, UFOs, yeah. um, odd mists, and, yeah, and the exactly, such. Yeah. Then potentially the true forms are these are forms them. of light yeah. um, that, that we know that light is also scientifically. Um, a form of life and mm. light doesn't actually react the same the, the same way all the time sometimes it reacts yeah. like a wave sometimes it reacts like a particle yeah. so when we're looking at like quantum physics and everything it's the the, the two slit experiment and that's yep. what makes people well they came under the understanding that light uh, reacts like a particle but also like a wave as well which is um, paradoxical really because how could it be both mm. yeah. It, it, yeah exactly it, yeah, yeah. Um, so there is certainly a a world that we are trying to scientifically understand and something that we can't even really mm. experience. Yeah, exactly. Without the use of the scientific measures. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think you are onto something there with regards to um, these creatures having their uh, a true form. Mm. And then when they, sort of like the Matrix, sort of like the Matrix in the, you know, in the real world, uh, they, they explain, I think Morpheus explains to um, Neo that when you go into the Matrix, you have what you've got, like a, uh, an imprint of yourself within your mind. Yeah. And within the Matrix, you are that. Mm. So that's why some people might be different in the real world Zion and that sort of thing. And then when they go into the Matrix, they look very, very different. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a similar sort of thing to that. Yeah. Maybe in their own dimension, they have this true form, this these these lights. Miss the ball of light or whatever. When they yeah. come into the material world. They're they given are, a material form. Yeah. And the form that they get given is the closest to what they are in their yeah, their own or dimension or in, even their own in their own consciousness yeah. or, or something like that. I mean Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. It, so that's kind of where I am, I guess. I suppose in essence, I suppose the short answer is yes, I believe that there is something. Mm-hmm. Do I believe that it's as easy as, you know, a bipedal, you know, dog man roaming the wilderness of, you know, Wisconsin and Michigan? Probably less likely. I think there's probably what more you mean to it. Like a like an actual like an actual creature that exists because it, it, blood and bones creature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think there's more to it than, you know, than than that. Um, in, in you know in that respect, um, and that's kind of that sort of theory, which I know is not my own, but that's the one I kind of buy into, mm. um, certainly at the moment, and that's the one that I'd kind of push forward on, you know, yeah. in terms of answering you know this kind of thing. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm more on the you know belief side, but with a slight. I guess twist in my um, theory or my my belief in in why I think it's real. Well, in I, that respect, I I very I do believe that it's real, and I do believe that what these people are experiencing is real. Um, I, I've got a lot of time mm-hmm. for Linda Godfrey um, as yeah. a, as a journalist, as an author, as a researcher. Um, yeah, definitely. And what I like about her journey is that she started off as a skeptic. You know, yeah, fully, exactly. fully intending to completely debunk it to find mm. that there's some abnormal uh, canine out yeah. there that, you know, is is something that's different from what everyone else usually sees, and, yeah, exactly. and she was going to solve it, which is yeah. you know, probably a bit of hubris on her part <coughs> in her younger days yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But it, well, it's kind of what you want, isn't it's it? It's understandable. Yeah, exactly. It's understandable yeah. as well. And and but I like what she said about with regards to um, what she saw on people's faces when they were recalling these these encounters and there is a a phenomena that where you are remembering something that's quite poignant you are literally experiencing the same um encounter as when you actually experienced it so when you're recalling and having those reactions Mm. it's there you are still right there you're still in it there's actually brain activity that they've been able to um, map Right. Um, that shows that people, when they do recount these experiences and they have these same feelings, like they, they yeah. visually go white, their palms become sweaty, there's there's spaghetti on their sweater already and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I thought the exact same thing. I was going to break into I'm, it. I'm glad, I'm glad you did. <laughs> but um, again, it's, it's in that book that I just you know, recently read, yeah. um, The Awakened Brain. It, it, there's so much neurology that coincides with these sort of experiences that people have yeah that it's real mm. it's real it's not just in their heads they are actually experiencing something yeah it might not be fully material if it might not be blood and bones it might mm. not be nuts and bolts that these people experience and I'm not, I'm not just necessarily talking about the the bray road encounters i'm talking about Anything. high strangeness yeah. in general you know so um, abduction um, mm. experiences and, and the such yeah. they are actually experiencing these things and yeah. to it's something that we need to actually start investigating because mm. we know that this stuff happens so we know that there are strange lights in the sky we know yeah. that there are these these are these cryptids are jumping about all over the place willy-nilly yeah especially in <coughs> north america yeah exactly um we need to we need to start investigating the actual experiences that people are having. Mm. Um, and there needs to be less dogma around it. Or not yeah. dogma, sorry, stigma. There needs to be less stigma mm. around um, people's experiences and, and the such. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, as for the actual uh, dog man or, the, or the, the beast itself, what when it's fleeing, mm. for me, that tells me that that's something that's got 
higher cognitive ability than most other animals that are out there. Yeah. So, like, or predators at the mm. very least. So, like, like what I said about the bears. Yeah. The bear, bear will look at you. You come across a bear on a on a on a trail, and it'll, it'll give you a look. Oh, can I act, can I eat that? Mm. That's about it. That's all it's going to think. And like, mm. if you make yourself big enough and scary enough, then it will run away. Um, Although I'd never try it. No, I'd run. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, yeah, fuck I'll, this. Yeah, but you could, <laughs> yeah, never run from a bear because it will chase you. Like a dog, like a dog. If you run, it gets excited. It's thinking, oh, now I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got you on the back foot now, Sonny. But and like with the cats as well. Like they, if they spot you on the trail, they'll they'll keep keep coming at you. Mm. And they, yeah. like there are people. This um, only recently, I think it was like, like last year or so. Um, uh, a, a mountain lion, a, a relatively small one, so like a ju- juvenile, attacked a, a jogger, and he ended up killing it. Oh he, wow! He strangled it. He he killed this cat, and he's lucky that it wasn't a full grown adult because that would have jacked him, big time. I say strangled it. Would you be in like a fucking headlock on he, the trail or he, something? Or pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Pretty that, much. that takes some balls, like, to, like just to get that bloody close to the thing. Yeah, but it, it had been stalking him, and it and it had right. ambushed him. Um, right. So he thought, yeah, I'm gonna have a go at this. Um, and the the bloke done done the cat in. Thank for him, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. But if it I was like, like your daddy cat, weren't too pleased. Mm. <laughs> oh hell! I would have hightailed it out of there quick. Well, he he's no longer running on that trail, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, they've probably got his scent and they're waiting for him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, they've got a, like, a vendetta. To, <laughs> yeah. To put forward, um, we've got wanted posters up around them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wanted po- posters, of this bloke that's just yeah. jacked. If you kid. see this gobshite, get him. <laughs> gobshite. He got Tiny Tim, get him. <laughs> he got Tiny Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fuck that, man. Yeah, fuck absolutely. that being ambushed by a mountain lion or something nope. like that. Sod that. I mean, nope. well done to him for fighting back. Really. Oh, yeah, absolutely hard, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like what I was saying before as well, with like with with the mist, mm. heavily linked with other high strangeness, and I yes. I was surprised, but also not surprised mm. to see that the beast of Bray Road was being linked with this as well, been linked with strange yeah. sights and like strange lights and objects in the sky, yeah, weird mists, um, animal yeah. mutilations. Paranormal uh, sightings as paranormal well. Paranormal sightings. Yeah, UFOs. I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lee uh, Hample. Lee Hample, yeah. Lee Hample setting up the those trail owner. cans. Yeah. Well done, mate. Yeah. Well done. Because from what I can gather, it seems like the, the, the residents know that it happens, but they just rather ignore, ignore it. it. Yeah. You know, and they're not looking to try and investigate it or anything like that. And well, I guess I, it helped that he was new to town. And he'd only mm. just, you know, not long bought the property or, you know, he'd only been there for maybe a couple of years. So it was all still quite fresh for him. So he maybe had a different reason to, you know, kind of look into it. Mm. Whereas the residents have maybe been there four or five generations. Well, the Bray, like the Bray fa- family. Bray family are still there. They're just like, eh. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is what it is. Or yeah, they've just come to accept it, you know, maybe. So, yeah, but no, good on him for mm. finding and that footage because it, it's really, really is interesting. Oh, absolutely. There was definitely something going on. Mm. Um Certainly coming out of like North America in particular, because it seems yeah. like we're we're getting more and more investigations of this paranormal not paranormal, sorry, high strangeness. Yeah. You know, so but especially with regards to cryptids mm. and UFO activity and, yeah. and strange lights and what is it? That's a thing. Like yeah. I I I can't even I can't necessarily put my my finger on it, but I like the theory that it's interdimensional in mm. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, as to its purpose, <clears throat> I couldn't even begin <clears throat> to, no. to start with that. Like, what could it, the actual purpose? Is it just part of nature? Is it just a phenomena yeah. that, that we don't understand? Like, yeah. I, I don't even know where to begin with it. Um, no. However, it seems like you can't ignore it because no. whenever we do another episode, it comes up. <laughs> Something else crops up again. Something yeah. comes up to add to it. Exactly, and yeah. You know, it's, it's not quite a synchronicity and it's definitely not a coincidence. It's no. just, it's just, it's just adding, there. Yeah. adding to that big pin board. Yeah. Adding more red string. Exactly, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It, it, one day we are going to find out. I'm sure we will, yeah. One day we're going to find out and I think people will still dig their heads in the sand. Mm. There'll still be a lot of naysayers and everything else like that. Mm. But one day it's going to come to a head and we're going to find out exactly what it's all about. Yeah. And 
then the dolphins are going to shoot off and sing. Yeah. <laughs> start, so long yeah. and thanks for all the fish. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I think it's something like that's going to happen. Yeah. I reckon you're probably right. Yeah. You didn't get <laughs> yeah. that reference, did you? Say that again? Did you didn't get that reference, did you? No, say it again. The so reference. long so long, and thanks for all the fish. No. Hitchhiker's no, Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, Christ. Oh, no, man. Jesus, oh, yeah. All right. We'll Sorry. cut that. We'll I did, cut yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. I haven't seen Hope, that for donkey years. Hopefully someone else yeah. out there will get it. Hopefully someone else will. Yeah, apologies for that. It was wasted. I, I've not I seen that. See the, I blank, like, the blank look on your face. Was so like, I was trying to work it out. I was yep. like, that sounded like a reference, but no, I've gone. No, I couldn't think. So it's like, yeah, sure. Yep, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Trying to trying to work it out. <laughs> I think you could probably pick up the cogs working on the uh, yeah, yeah. on the mic. So yeah, so apologies for that. That's probably that duck again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that reference was. Yeah, no, that was weird. That <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think that that pretty much wraps it up, doesn't it? Yeah. We've, we're sort of off the uh, off the fence, more or less, on the same side again. Um, yeah. Maybe just coming from slightly different uh, angles, perhaps. But um, it just seems like it just. It's yeah. building up and building up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, and as always, guys, if you know if you've you know, enjoyed what you've heard and you know you've got your own theories, maybe your own experiences. Um, you know, maybe you're in Wisconsin listening to this, and you've had your own, you know, sighting or you know, you know, family that have or whatever. Then you know, please do reach out, or you just have an opinion on the episode. You know, reach out and let us know. You know, we've got. Um, you know, we've got the email address. We've got we're on the various uh, socials, all under the the same uh, same uh, tag um, at Cryptid Ramblers Podcast uh, on Instagram, Facebook, yep. uh, Twitter, even YouTube, where we uh, upload a sort of a, a video version of sorts of, mm-hmm. uh, of of each episode. So even drop a comment on on there if if uh, if you wish. Um, but um, otherwise, um, there we are with a. Uh, another episode um i've been callum he's been scott <laughs> and we uh, we hope you've enjoyed it um as we've as we've said it certainly has been a, a fun one to kind of look into and i know we've certainly had some fun with it oh, <laughs> hopefully yeah. that's uh, translated on on this episode and <laughs> you know you guys have uh, enjoyed it as well um as always we want to thank our uh, patrons justin and james for their continued support and of course our new patron member um Anika. Again, I hope we're saying that right, but uh, correct <laughs> yeah. us if we're not. Um, so yeah, thank you and uh, and welcome aboard. Um, and remember, guys, you two can uh, join the others in supporting your favourite podcast by heading to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers. Um, another thanks again to uh, Hellfire Studios for um, homing us and uh, you know letting us continue to bring you this content. Go to hellfirecreative.com for info on all the services that they provide and hellfirestudio.uk to use our um, discount code CRYPTID for 20% off. Lovely, um, lovely. We also um, have our brand new merch store um, with the guys that buy that merch, which is uh, an extension of the of their clothing brand, which is SOS Clothing. Um, so just go to buythatmerch.co.uk and you can search for us under the podcast merch tab and um, through alphabetical order, thankfully, we are top of the list, so hey, you hey. should be able to find us. Um, or, yeah, go to buythatmerch.co.uk forward slash cryptid ramblers. Um, so, yeah, that wraps it up. It does. It do. does. <laughs> and uh, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And remember, there are horrors beyond life's edge that we do not suspect – and once in a while, man's evil prion calls them just within our range. H.P. Lovecraft. Love indeed. it. <laughs> Excellent indeed. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Yeah, I like that.